All right. Hello and welcome, everyone, including those of you on YouTube. Kulervo is out, and it is time to talk about Kulervo. I'm going to call him Kulervo because calling him Kulervo is just, just terrible. It's just awful. I won't do it. We will not do it. We're not going to do it. His name's Kulervo. That's what we were calling him before he came out, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. Anyway, Kalirvo is out, and he has a problem that I have fixed in a way that seems probably not super worth it, uh, but does make him work. So we're going to talk about his problems and how that can be fixed, and also talk about what's good about him, because there is a lot good about him. Also, the streamathon is literally still continuing. Yes, I know there's been a large amount of time, but literally the timer can't be added to anymore. It's still there, though. It's been moved so you can see the health values. That will be important during this video. Uh, so, in terms of build, we have three strength shards on him, and I have two energy max shards on him, which is a good balance for what we want to get to in terms of energy economy and also the strength that we kind of want to see, not necessarily that we need to see. And this is the build. It is six forma full umbral build. I do not have a subsume on him, which we'll go over why and what some options are in a second. But this build is full umbral with adaptation, and then we worry about our power stats. We need a lot of range because his four starts with 10 meter range, but it's really good as long as you give it at least 200 some percent range. Uh, and we also want to hit 200% strength for our three so that the damage redirection hits 100%. So... Bolt augmented once we kill 250 enemies, which doesn't take very long, will put us at 207% strength, which is plenty. We also are at 155% duration and 130% efficiency. It is worth noting that on this build, you can switch Augur Reach in here and use Fleeting Expertise here instead. This will make you have to recast more often, but the energy economy is more manageable. So if you are having trouble with the energy economy, this is a variant of this build to try instead. Uh, but having more range is good if you can uh, keep up with... No, the bug happened. If you can keep up with the energy economy. It's usually not too bad. Also, if you have a set of Energize, this build doesn't use a set of Energize. I'm using a set of Arcane Blessing right here instead of what would normally be Energize. This will allow him to get another 1,200 health, which will matter. for a thing we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, but Energize also completely solves is energy economy if you happen to have it. Otherwise, just swapping out to different efficiencies, it'll change how much you have to recast. 155% duration, though, is really nice because it means you don't have to recast this for super often because it'll have 23 seconds uh, of uptime this way. Uh, and yeah, overall, the power stats just kind of work. Steel charges here because his one, you're going to need a melee weapon. There are a lot of viable options for this, uh, but basically a good heavy attack melee is what he wants. And then other than that, you're just trying to live because his two is this recompense ability. This sends out daggers, and when those daggers hit enemies, you get overguard if you're at full health, or health if you're below full health. So, what that ends up meaning is that overguard is usually you're gonna get like 2,000 some overguard whenever you cast this ability. But overguard has problems right now. Namely, Overguard is way worse shields, and for whatever reason, it's capped at only 5,000. Another thing that happened with this update is that Rhino's Iron Skin was converted into being Overguard, but Rhino can generate upwards of half a million Overguard, which is what makes that workable for Rhino. For Calervo's purposes, you can generate up to 5,000, and presuming that you do, it is the absolute wettest meltiest tissue paper that you could possibly equip onto Kulervo. And what I mean by that is that it is no damage resistance, except for it's weak to void damage, and it is not affected by adaptation. In the patch notes, if we look at the patch notes, you can see adaptation is specifically called out here, where this overguard change uh, has allowed the added benefit of on-damage mods and arcanes to apply to all of the above. Prior to this change, the aforementioned abilities would make the player invulnerable until the added survivability ability was depleted. Now, mods and arcanes like Adaptation and Arcane Avenger can now be triggered when damage is taken in overguard because it is treated similarly to health and shields. The way this reads, and my interpretation of it, 
is that adaptation is actually supposed to work. Right now, you will build stacks of adaptation, but the actual defensive property, the 90% damage reduction of adaptation, does not work on Overguard. What that ends up meaning is that with all these like Umbral uh, mods and adaptation and all that, with our health being at 2400 and our armor being at 1275, we have about 120,000 EHP. And whenever we add Overguard, it's 126,000 EHP. So it makes up like an incredibly infinitesimally tiny little nothing of our defensive capabilities because it's capped at 5,000 and it's not affected by anything that would allow it to survive more than one bullet on the steel path, basically. So it's pretty useless as anything more than a glorified heal, which is bad. In my opinion, Overguard needs to change so that adaptation works on it, which is seemingly from the patch notes what is supposed to happen anyway. And then also I think that Overguard probably at least needs to have Eximus resistance on it, which Eximus resistance is pretty much just blanket 50% damage resistance to everything. That would make it at least a little closer to shields because what shields offer is 25% universal damage resistance for our shields anyway. Uh, and then they have the shield gate. The shield gate is arguably much, much better than the damage reduction, but just getting double the damage reduction of shields and being able to be affected by adaptation would really go a long way to that number actually, you know, being good. Because if you applied both of those things to this, you'd end up with this actually equaling about 100,000 EHP um, whenever you have adaptation applied, which would make it so that you don't like have to use all of these mod spaces just to have a little bit of survivability. Because for your consideration, uh, comparing Kalervo's EHP, which is at about 126,000 right now, with this super invested build to another Warframe with a super invested survival build, which is Nidus. Nidus's damage reduction allows him to get to about a million EHP, and Kalervo's at about a tenth of that right now. So he probably could use something to boost him up at least a little bit. Other options are, of course, like, taking the overguard cap away and then also having adaptation work with it. Um, I think that would be fine because he would build it up rather slowly, but it would be effective once you have adaptation applied and so on and so forth. It's also worth noting that for Calerbo, if you're not going to do steel path, the 5,000 is, is fine. It's about what regular Rhino works with on normal star chart. Anyway, whenever you just pre press two with no modifiers. Um, so it's totally fine for normal content, but it is a consideration that surviving on the steel path, unless you're going very high investment on just health tanking is not very good. Anyway, the whole thrust of this build is, well, I should show the heavy attack weapon. We're using the Azathane here. Uh, it's worth noting that I don't have it yet, but the Ceramic Dagger with its Incarnan should be insane on this build. But I'm using the Azathane. Uh, the benefit to this is that this is also available really early, just like Kulerbo is from Dubiri. So if you're a newer player, you're not going to put this build together. But if you get the Azathane, you can put this build together, which doesn't even require a catalyst on this. Uh, and this will do very, very well and be able to kill the enemies that we're about to kill. But this is the full investment as a Thane Heavy Attack build, which is what you're probably looking for if you're looking to put this build on Kulervo. You can also really chop this down and like not go for 200% range and go for significantly less strength because you don't really need all that strength. And do a bunch of other stuff like that to make Kulervo very useful in regular level missions and be able to do some Steel Pass stuff. So by no means do you need to go all in on this. And you can also cut down a lot of the cost on this build if you uh, have an unranked Umbral Fiber, because this will remove just straight up 10 points of capacity here, significantly, significantly lowering, not this, significantly lowering the investment on this build, because multiple formas become unnecessary uh, just by doing that one switch. But we're showing the full investment stuff, because you probably want it at least until his Overguard gets fixed. So yeah, big important thing uh, in the bottom right, his like special meter is actually just allowing you to see what your combo meter is all the time. His four builds combo, and then his one uses heavy attacks. Uh, also, his passive gives you faster heavy attacks and 75% heavy attack efficiency, which basically boils down to meaning you don't use all your combo whenever you heavy attack, so you can do it a lot more often uh, to much greater effect. So, to start off, these are new options. We have the Steel Path available as an option here. So these are level 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunner, or tw sorry, it's 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunners with the Steel Path modifiers, and they're still level 190. I just want to show this off because you can see what the damage is of what Kalervo is doing. So this is his three, which chains all the enemies together, plus his four, which is a rain of daggers. 
His three makes them all share the damage. Uh, and then the four Reign of Daggers always procs a slash. Uh, this is lasting for like 20 seconds, and you can keep using his three to chain more enemies together and have like all the enemies taking damage in this big AoE. This is obviously the ideal scenario for all these enemies to instantly be chained together in this big open room, but there are rooms like this, namely like the circuit, that basically function the exact same way with the huge range we have on this ability. Uh, and the four it stays that for a good long time. Um, and also does enough good damage to clear in regular level missions and also in the steel path for kind of your fodder level enemies. Whenever you get into like Xmas and other stuff, it will eventually kill them, but you'll want to get to them first. Um, the four also does do a stun on enemies that are vulnerable to stuns, which is nice. And the three does a stumble. Weird thing about the three though, is that the three doesn't chain Eximus with other enemies, which I think is a bug because the XMI overguard protection usually doesn't protect from effects like that. Uh, so that may also be a bug with his kit. Anyway, the other thing is that his one is a heavy attack. So if you chain all these enemies together, you can then look at an enemy and just use your one, get a bunch of crit, and do a heavy attack. And that will also be very effective at killing all these enemies. Because getting a bunch of crit and using a weapon that has a heavy attack that always procs slash uh, is uh, very effective, turns out. Turns out that that is quite strong. Also, his one can be used freely. I have inverted the controls, so I can just tap it at any time to do it. Uh, but his one can be used freely to just teleport wherever you'd like to go. So he is, because of that, extremely fast. He's extremely, extremely fast. There is a short cooldown before warps, uh, but basically you just get to teleport to wherever you want to be. Uh, and there's also no animation for it, so it's like kind of hilarious the way that he uh, teleports. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much what's up. And then his two uh, adds Overguard, which... I'll just show you the comparison of how fast Overguard melts as compared to how fast he dies. Uh, so using his two, we get like 3,000. And you can see just like, yeah. 5,000 Overguard deleted in an, in, an, in an instant. And then my health like actually lasts. You can, you can see this like the comparative difference of like whether or not damage reduction works. Like this stuff is just not useful. It is like a complete waste. Um, because like, it, it, it no damage reduction applies to it, and a five thousand is a hilariously low number if you're not multiplying it multiple times by huge amounts of damage reduction. So, yeah. So his overguard is not useful. It's just 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 use it to heal whenever your health takes a lot of damage. Is the the TLDR for that? Other options are naturally you can put gloom on him. Uh, you do want something that will heal. There are a few options for that. Uh, you can use the new Arcane, which is Arcane Reaper. If you have a set of this on melee kills, which he wants to be doing, you get 24 heal rate and then also 660 armor. Hilariously, if you do the math on this, this 660 armor actually gives you more damage reduction and therefore effective health points than his two does. Like it gives you considerably more. I think it gives you 20,000 more effective health uh, as opposed to the 5,000 that his two gives you. So this is replacing that effect as well um doesn't give you as much as arcane blessing arcane blessing gives you sixty thousand, um but arcane reaper also offers a heal so if you need a heal to still be in still be in his kit arcane reaper is a solution for that which is one of the newer arcanes uh but yeah his two can be nourish which will solve energy economy problems very very immediately and add damage to pretty much everything that he does um and also it'll spread viral to everything whenever you get shot which will be often uh, so that will also make everything you do do, do more damage. So Nourish is an option. Uh, Roar is an option. Obviously, it makes everything you do better. You have the stats for it. Um, but yeah, also someone is pointing out in chat correctly uh, that for Arcane Reaper, uh, literally the unranked version gives more uh, effective health than his 2 does. Um, but the heal rate, you probably want it to be at least ranked 2 or 3 before you could realistically just drop your 2 and have no healing besides this. Uh, but definitely at rank 5, it'll be great and probably be more better consistent healing than your 2 is, even. Uh, also, Pillage is technically an option. You could go for it. I think that the build is too hard to make work because you need to use Blind Rage and all kinds of stuff there um, in order to really make it worthwhile. Also, Calervo does not have shields, so he does not benefit from shield gating and cannot get shields from Pillage, so it's pretty tough there. Uh, he also doesn't need an armor strip because he just does Slash with all of his stuff. Yeah, Thero Strike also an option. You could do it. But again, no need for an armor strip, but that is a heal. 
Uh, but yeah, so tons and tons of different options that you could throw on him for Helmet. I've decided just to not throw anything on here for now, hoping that um, Overguard gets fixed and that ability just actually becomes good. Because at that point, it becomes really, really challenging to figure out what you're going to remove from this build because you could not build around Uko, and then you could replace this, or you could not build around Wrathful, and then you could replace this. Um, but it's really just a question of once Recompense gets fixed, hopefully... Uh, you're going to be choosing something to lose, so it becomes a much harder choice that's going to be more personal for what you're going to give up in order to get whatever you're subsuming on. Anyway, yeah, also, also I went over the Arcane Strat, it's alright. Yeah, it's Volt Augmented and um, and Blessing. But yeah, anyway, that's pretty much what's up with Kulervo. Also, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but yeah, his four, his 4 does build combo, so there's also that as a consideration. So yeah, he does a lot of damage. Like, his damage is considerable. He's really enhancing, like, what you're going to get out of, um, like, the heavy attacks. Obviously, the Azathane by itself can kill these enemies, but whenever you're using his three to chain all the enemies together and make it so you hit everyone in a gigantic AoE, it's really solid. Anyway, let's jump over to the Steel Path and uh, kill a bunch of mans. We're barely survivable because we have the most insane investment in the world, but, you know, maybe someday Overguard will be good, too. Let us go back to sure. Fair enough. But yeah, this is like fairly easy with this build, but God, it should be. I was really hoping that his overguard was going to be good so that he could have like a nice. Like, I mean, he'd still be a, like a decent new player frame. But like, overguard working with adaptation would mean that he could be like a good introductory frame for Steel Path as well, which would be really highly desirable because, like, you know, that's not super common. Yeah, in terms of the death applied, it's pretty good. Making your heavy attacks just like super huge AoEs, turns out is alright. Also, just like making it so that you're four if there's enemies inside it. Pushing that AoE basically out and making it do a lot more damage to the enemies outside it. Also quite effective. Yeah, his energy economy here at the beginning is going to look a little suspect. You can use Zeneric to, like, really patch that up. Uh, but once the x starts spawning, you tend to run out of problems really fast. That's another thing that if you have it, you could just use Energize to never really have to think about. But I don't think he needs it. It is also worth noting uh, that because Overguard is not very good, it provides crowd control immunity, but if an attack breaks it that does crowd control, you will still be hit by that crowd control. Uh, so for that reason, it's like not in effect, especially at higher levels, really. At lower levels, it'll still be effective, though. But at lower levels, it shouldn't really matter. Because pretty much everything is effective at lower levels, turns out. Also, he's really good at killing Acolytes, which probably shouldn't come as a surprise. Maximus is dead and gone. I think he has a thing, best weapon to pair with him. Well, so I haven't tested it because I don't have it, but I think that the Ceramic Dagger would be the best thing you could pair with him. But the Azathane's a really solid one. Uh, honestly, any weapon that is a heavy attack weapon that has, like, a good arc that always procs Slash is going to be stellar. Like, anything that fits that description is going to be absolutely, fun like, just phenomenal with him. Because the, the real shit is that it needs to proc Slash so that it can, like, you know, kill hard targets. Um, and anything other than that isn't going to matter too much. Uh, the Azathane's a really solid one it's got a nice big arc and good wind up and it also is like an active framed for a while so that's all really good but um stuff like hate if you have the hate incarnate that's gonna be really good yeah ceramic dagger with the incarnate to be very specific um 
yeah hate with its incarnate gonna be really good hate just in general it doesn't actually need its incarnate to be really good with this um reaper prime uh the nakanas are okay but their heavy attack like arc wise could be a lot better so it's a consideration but not amazing and anything that if it if it procs slash whenever you heavy attack it's probably going to be pretty good now we get to do funny things to the acolyte goodbye yeah so that's what acolytes don't like it uh if you use his one they're they're really not into it they're really not into it so yeah they'd, pre they'd prefer you didn't is really most of it. Where do you go? Uh, the Shadow Realm. Yeah, he has been summarily beheaded. I genuinely looked away and missed it. Gotta pay attention. Gotta keep your eyes on the prize. If you're not looking at them, they might not be there the next time. The little bro got spawn camp. You're right, but damn. Where'd the enemies go? Warframe, you have to spawn enemies. It's very important to me that you spawn the enemies in. Also, it's worth noting his three is at an angle. So if you don't have an enemy that's like directly in front of you, it can sometimes be a little problematic. Um, because you won't hit an enemy that's near you with it, and you'll chain a bunch of guys that are far away. Not a problem if you just use a gun with his three, but... It's a consideration if you're using like the super strong heavy attacks. That was just 1.5 million for nothing. And you can see these will make short work of a lot of Warframes, but with the Umbral build, not a problem. Now, if you're just trying to use his Overguard to survive, I'd be dead right now. Yeah, slash procs, all like Azathane heavies, um, make sure work the Xmas as well. There we go. Having a heavy attack that clears a room, it's good. It's pretty good. It's all right. At least okay. Ah, uh, this is the full Umbral ridiculous build, isn't it? That is correct. This is just the, um, this is the enemies be gone. I hit focus cap, I guess. Oh, wait, no, I don't have any, um, lenses and anything that I'm using right now. There's a lens on my latum. enemies are now all dead how dare you first of all first of all how dare you and second of all goodbye yeah if you have like i don't know if you have this insane build it should work also it's worth noting uh, i have not had the chance to test him out in circuit yet where the level scales hilariously fast so it is definitely very possible that you begin to die with him um relatively early wave like wave like eight or nine which that's that's early for my bar so some of you let me let me know in the comments if like hearing you might die around eight or nine is like hilarious yeah goodbye angst
Yeah, the Acolytes are not a problem. Violence can sometimes be a problem because sometimes he doesn't let you cast your one on him. But you can also cast your one before they show up and the buff persists for a little while, so you can just do that too. As soon as it hits round seven, I'm out. Fair enough. Yeah, you can see I've stacked up Blessing. Um, like, I've got 37 stacks of Blessing. He's not the fastest to stack Blessing in the world because mostly the Eximus will be doing it. Um, that's actually part of the reason why you could just use Reaper all the time if you're going to be doing, me like, you know, melee heavy attack stuff. Um, because they offer, you know, both, they both offer EHP. Uh, and you don't have to use your two to heal. So you can just ignore your two pretty much entirely if you use Arcane Reaper. But I like having the option to do both, actually. Almost died there because I wasn't stacked up from the heat resistance, but... We're not only using Overguard. Because if I was only using Overguard, I hate to keep mentioning this, but that would have killed me instantly. I would already be quite dead uh, were I only using his Overguard for survivability. Like, it would not even be a question. I would be six feet under. I'd be buried. My eulogy would be currently ongoing. So, yeah, that's... Uh... That's why we don't just use his Overguard. Even though it prevents us from being knocked down, it's better that we could actually live through something. Really hoping... Really hoping there are some positive Overguard changes. And then we're about at 10 minutes here, so we're going to get out of here, show off his teleporting a little bit. Oh, it's also worth noting our companion is dead. There's a current bug with his one, where if your companion is, like, floating above you, dead, especially if it's a panzer. Um, and I think it can happen with just sentinels as well. But, yeah, for, for like, low ceilings, so if I jump in here, I won't be able to teleport. But if I don't jump, I can teleport. Um, if the ceiling is too close to you, for whatever reason, the hitbox is, like, high. Uh, so you can't teleport. So, yeah, through, through doorways and stuff, you can have trouble with that. But that's probably just a bug that'll get patched up. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's up with Kulervo. He's pretty good, hopefully, Overguard itself, or the numbers on his Overguard, at the very least, get some changes. Because if they do, I think he's a ton of fun and really good. If they don't, he'll be unfortunately needing a super insanely high investment build like this one to really get much done outside of regular path content oh yeah that's gonna do it for the video thank you to everybody hanging out in the stream thanks for watching on youtube uh and yeah the stream is ongoing the stream is ongoing all right hello everyone it's been month two of the streamathon but more youtube videos are on the way and for that, thanks especially to all of the patrons that are supporting the channel. Alex Barnum, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Vinny Vin, uh, Brutus Salazar, Dylan Dworski, Ethrain, Hafan, IQ is Thick, James Harsthorn, JC4 Science, Jesse Richens, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Luzant, Alec X. Williams, Minty Ginja, Mitch Stuff, Vermoxidate, Rena Valentine, Tamrielic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, The Waifu Wars, Zack Zaner, and Zerafir, and of course, all of the $5 patrons uh, and the $2 patrons as well. Thank you very much everyone for the support it has been incredible there are so many of you now um and yeah expect a lot more videos and stuff after the streamathon is over we're gonna get way back into the free to play through and the huge guides that i've been trying to write for the site and everything so expect a lot of that to be going on in the near future